All right. Today we are doing Chapter 4, Section 1 out of the Algebra 1 book. Our essential question is, given the graph of a linear function, how can you write an equation of the line? So, we're just going to jump right into it. We want to write an equation of a line with the given slope and the y-intercept. This is typically going to be the easiest one type of problem that you're going to be given. Because you're given the slope, m, and you're given that y-intercept, b. E. So we want to use the slope-intercept form of the line, y equals mx plus b. Uh, it's just a matter of plugging in what you know. You know, m is negative 3, b is 1 half. That's our equation right there, y equals negative 3x plus 1 half. Let's do a second one. Here, our slope is 0. That's interesting. And our y-intercept is negative 2. Let's go ahead and plug in what we know. And you might want to ask yourself, what is 0 times x? It's 0. So you don't even need to write that down, y equals negative 2. Ask yourself, is this a horizontal or a vertical line? Hope you, hopefully you guys realize that that is a horizontal line. It's got a slope of 0. So the equation is y equals negative 2. On this one, you are given a graph. And we want to write it in slope-intercept form. So there's a couple things that we can get off that graph. We can find the slope, rise over run. And we can find that y-intercept from the graph. So that's going to be our first step. Um, our slope is the difference of our y's minus the difference of our x's. So it's going to be 3 minus negative 3. Those are our y values. 4 minus 0. Those are our x's. And you reduce that fraction and you get 3 halves. It's crossing at 0, negative 3. So our y-intercept is at negative 3. So now we know m and we know b. It is going to be 3 halves x minus 3. Let's go ahead and do b. We're given two points. Let's find that slope. Difference of your y's, which is going to be negative 1 minus 2. And the difference of our x's, 4 minus 0. Our y-intercept is 2 because it's crossing at 2. So the equation is y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 2. All right, this one, a little bit more challenging. We want to write an equation on a line that passes through the given points. This time, they're giving us two points. They're not giving us a line or anything, but they're giving us two points. And you're going to find that this one is really not as bad as it looks. Because what I notice right away is that first number is 0. And so this order pair is 0, negative 1. Ask yourself, where does that lie? It's on the y-axis. So they're kind of indirectly telling us what our y-intercept is. So let's go ahead and find the slope, difference of your y's, over the difference of your x's. And our y-intercept is at negative 1. Whenever that x is 0, it's on the y-axis. So there's your y-intercept. So your equation is y equals negative 2x minus 1. You do the same thing over here. Find the slope, the difference of your um, x's, or the difference of your y's over the difference of your x's. So 5 minus negative 5 all over 8 minus 0. And you notice you get 0, so I'm automatically thinking it's a horizontal line. And our y-intercept is negative 5 because they're giving us the intercept right here. So y equals negative 5. All right, they're giving it to us in function notation. And this looks like it's going to be tough. Piece of cake. Um, function notation, you can rewrite that as an ordered pair. Your input is 0, your output is 10. That's an ordered pair, 0, 10. Your input is 6, your output is 34. That's an ordered pair, 634. So let's go ahead, find the slope, 34 minus 10 over 6 minus 0, and you get 4. They're also telling us our y-intercept is 10. So now we've got all the important information. 
we can write this in equation y equals 4x plus 10. And then we can change that, take out that y and give it as a function notation f of x. All right. There are six problems here. I would suggest you hit pause. Try these six problems out on your own. When you think you've got the answers, hit the play button and check yourself. y equals 7x plus 2. y equals 1 third x minus 1. y equals 1 half x plus 1 y equals negative 2 fifths x minus 1. And that makes sense. You've got a negative slope here. You should um, get a negative right there as well. y equals 3x minus 2. And y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 9. All right, my favorite, a word problem. Excluding hydropower U.S. power plants used renewable energy sources to generate 105 million megawatt hours of electricity in 2007. By 2012, the amount of electricity generated had increased to 219 million megawatt hours. Write a linear model that represents the number of megawatt hours generated by non-hydro power renewable energy sources as a function of the number of years since 2007. So at 2007, our T or our time is zero. Use the model to predict the number of megawatt hours that will be generated in 2017. So what we need to do is we need to write a linear model or an equation. And it's starting at 2007, and we're predicting a future amount. Our plan, we're going to break it down into some order pairs and write an equation. So we need to define the variables, write a linear model, and then we're going to go ahead and solve that bad boy. So let x represent the time in years since 2007. So. going to be 0. 2012 would be 5 years later, so it would be 5. So it's going to be 0, 105. So in the year 2007, it was 105. In the year 2012, which is 5 years later, it was 219. So find the slope, and you get 22.8. So we've got y equals 105 plus 22.8 times x. I probably would have written it as 22.x plus 105. And then we're looking for 2017, which is 10 years after 2007. So our x is going to be 10, and you get 333. So that kind of um, means in the year 2017, renewable energy sources will generate 333 million megawatt hours. You can go back, plug in your original data, to see if it works, and it does. All right, the corresponding data for electricity generated by hydropower are 248 million megawatts in 2007 and 277 megawatts in the year 2012. We want to write a linear model that re represents the number of megawatt hours generated by hydropower as a function of the number of years since 2007. So starting at 2007, our T is going to be zero. So we're going to have two order pairs. In 2007, which is our starting point, so t is 0, we'll have 277. 
and 2012, which is five years later. Oops, that's too set. I read that too quickly. That's 277. We're going to have to do a quick erase right here, which is why you always want to go back and reread that problem a second time. I should have gone with the 248. <coughs> Make that 8 look a little better. So there are our two ordered pairs. Take a second, work this out. When you are done, hit play again and check your answer. You should get y equals 5.8x plus 248. 248 is our starting time in 2007. And if you find the slope between those two points, you're going to get 5.8. All right, that's all we have for Chapter 4, Section 1. If you want, you are always welcome to come into Math Lab or into iPass. Enjoy.